everybody, it's Scott Omato back for episode 9 of my Heat and Climate Let's Play. Guys, tons of days have passed between episodes, the time flies so fast in here. So, we're almost in the middle of summer, we're 25 days into summer. Uh, and it's kind of hot, a little bit, uh, but I've got more stuff done on here. Uh, you can see I got lamps. Uh, the lamps are actually pretty easy to make. Uh, but I did go and get them from the other mills, uh, just because why, why leave them there? But these wooden wall lamps, you basically make these wooden lamps, which are really neat, and then just add copper to it. Now, the wooden lamp is so simple to make. It takes a white chasseldony, which, you know, we got when we got white ore, and a redstone. So not even a glowstone or anything like that, and just surround it by wood. And uh, I'll take you inside, and they look like this. So they can go right into the floor. They give a light source. Now they do think give a heat source. All right. So this is the inside so far. Uh, I've got a, one of their carpets. Uh, and then I have the uh, table and chairs. Uh, this is all just rough. I'm just kind of making this stuff. Uh, I'll go over the recipes just so you could see. But, you know, a table, just some wood. There's some different types. Uh, let's see. This one's the one. So it's just four or five planks. Uh, this kind of table is five planks that way, so real inexpensive. A chair is like this, just a piece of cloth and some planks. Uh, again, quite inexpensive. Okay, and then I got the cooking for blockhead stuff done. Uh, well, not done, but I actually dyed this brown. I, I need to dye that back. Uh, but we've got the refrigerator stacked twice. I'll give it a double chest worth. We've got the oven, a cooking table, a sink, kitchen counters, and then kitchen cabinets. Okay, and then one thing in here in the kitchen cabinets, I have empty steak plates. So, of course, you know, cooking for blockheads will show you all the recipes of the food items that are available. So, you know, we get some new stuff, uh, these like green salad and all this kind of stuff. Uh, let's actually make one of those. That'll give us three. Uh, you got to double click it and it'll make it. So uh, there's that raw eggs. Now that raw eggs thing we did, we should have cooked it. All right. So that, that may be another thing that we make, but that'll help us to pick out foods. And then I have like all the raw ingredients that you would want to make to, you know, produce other foods here along the sides and we'll look in that in a little bit detail again there's just lots of research that you have to do uh this mod is actually very extensive you know you can go down different rabbit holes and uh, get into different stuff i finally do have a bed i do have the cooling coil uh from tough as nails here and again it's it's real easy to make too let's look at cooling uh, you just get ice, these ice cubes, so you break ice and you'll get a certain number of drops of them and then it's just any kind of stone and a redstone. So it's really cheap and it, it helps along with our cooling. You see I'm cool right now. And then the bookshelves here are from Inspirations and I'm filling them with um, enchanted books from the fishing, from the uh, water strainer mod. So if they're filled with enchanted books, then they're worth 2.5 bookcases. So this is five bookcases right here, and then I'll continue to fill them up. All right, so just to have a little citra in here, and then the fire stand you can use for cooking too, and just a marble table. All right, so uh, that's basically indoors, uh, outdoors. Uh, the wisteria has gone crazy. It's spread, it er spread everywhere, and that's fine. You know, I kind of like it. But I still haven't figured out how to like harvest the seeds or anything from it. Uh, if you break one, like you say, it says with a shear, but see if I break one, I just get the wisteria plants. So I don't know. And then I can't like do anything with them in a crafting. So I have gotten wisteria seeds before, like when I was play testing, but I don't know. I'll have to look at the source I think and these have done nothing so I think they're just decorative little plants uh, I do have soy over there running um, and again I'll demonstrate that using shears you can harvest a large area of crops all right real large area so just you know grab with shears and 
bam, you can pretty much harvest this whole field. I think it's a seven by seven, uh, but that gives us soybeans and then they have lots of different uses. Uh, so that's an important crop to use. Uh, if you grind it, you can get like defatted soy, which has other uses. Uh, fluid processing, soy pulp will give you soy milk. And then there's all, all kinds of different recipes uh, that you can make. So that's a good crop. I finally got sugarcane in and cactus in. And then the seaweed, yes, we were correct that if you put it uh, in like that underground, then you'll, you'll get seaweed out of it. So I've been harvesting stuff and gotten quite a bit of, of a backlog. I'll show you the refrigerator one more time just so you could see what inventory we have. Um, and these are the lotus plants here. And I think there's like different stages that they go through. But see, if I harvest those, I get lotus petals, all right? And so I've gotten a few lotus petals. Let me put a good Swiss theory in it. Got a lot of that. Um, and but you can also get like lotus seeds and again I, I don't know if that's at a different stage or something but i haven't gotten it so far so let's open the refrigerator here I, and i kind of like when you open it uh let's see let's try to do it without yeah and you can see all the items inside of it so we've got lots of flowers olives you know wheat all, pretty much all the crops here, beans, you know, all that. But some of them you have to, you know, go into various states, uh, like making cheese, for instance, is a thing. Margarine, butter, uh, dough, uh, miso, tofu. You know, there's all these different things that you go through. Graham crackers, cream drops. Uh, so agar, you know, just a lot of different stuff. And that's kind of the, how you, you know, master a food mod is you figure out what raw ingredients let me uh i can use cork uh to uh feed it with the merge you hold shift and hit merge to nearby chest and it'll merge into there so that's pretty cool i still need to get my storage uh in order but you know it's it's working out okay so uh what we want to do in this episode um and it's going to be a little bit split up um and we'll see how much we can get done is that we want to do automated steel production all right and we need to produce this stainless steel and tool steel we need to go to the next levels uh, because we are targeting this hammer mill we're going to try to move into tier three stuff um and you know then we need to make gearbox and another heat exchanger uh and do stuff like that now I want to repurpose this setup. This works great for a furnace. Um, uh, in fact, there's a nifty little recipe and I saw it in that first episode when we were setting this thing up. Actually, let me um, turn everything on. Let's get this turned on and that turned on. Uh, that will take dirt and make clay. So if I run dirt in this guy, okay, then it'll process and I can use this lever to turn off the hopper so it goes into the conveyor belt. I didn't show this before, but the conveyor belts can pull directly out of uh, one of these and then process through. So that's pretty neat, uh, but we're gonna move a lot of this, all right? We're gonna repurpose uh, this setup. It'll be larger overall, but it'll still do the same thing, but it'll be able to do steel and be able to do um, to tool steel and even titanium and all that all right now i did some uh investigating with the heating coil uh, again if you do tam temp info all right so you can see the seasons plus five so this should be like the hottest time right here i don't know if it gets to plus six but the armor is negative one biome temperature because we're in planes is plus two all right um so if i turn this guy on and I, I just need a block over my head, all right? And see, I get no cooling from it there, but I do get climatization if I have a block over my head. Now, if you notice in uh, the uh, HUD for heat and climate, it says cold, all right? So I can actually get cooling from that too. See, I'm cool when I'm close to it, has a gradient, and I'm cold when I'm right next to it. Uh, so 
that might be interesting. Uh, I don't know what we could do with automation or something like that, but it definitely helps with our, our climate too. And I did discover again by using the TAM temp info that the cotton hat actually makes me hotter, right? Watch this. So if I put on the cotton hat, it says armor plus one, plus one. So it's actually, I'm losing two points of, of climatization compared to that. If I put on that one, armor's minus one. So again, these tool tips in here for climate resistance, heat, cold, all that, they don't apply to tough as nails. Tough as nails has its own kind of internal logic to it, but this guy actually makes you hotter, right? And that's interesting. So it has the same armor rating and all that, but this makes you hot. So I was, you know, getting the flame every once in a while, I never like got heat damage or anything, but I was checking that out and it was because of that. So anyway, we'll turn this guy off for now. Uh, I just like to explore those numbers and stuff to understand what's going on. Uh, and of course we do get heat from being near the blocks and stuff and all that as well. But we can have like a cooling system out here a little bit uh, just by putting a block over our head. But as I said, guys, we're going to tear this down right here and move it over a little bit. All right. And all this is still temporary because again, there needs to be a building that goes up before winter here uh, that all this goes in. But I need to uh, use this space a little bit uh, better uh, for that setup. So guys, I'm going to do that and I'll be right back with you. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to tear this down and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, guys. So I think I've got our stuff ready here. Just move this over a bit, maybe a little bit too much, but it's, it's, it'll be okay. So basically um, we need to produce this gearbox. All right. So the gearbox will let you combine multiple torque sources into one. All right. And so it's using a lot of brass spindles and all that. So we need to make some more brass. But I want to show, we're going to actually use bronze for this. So I'm, I want to show you the alternative recipe for that. Uh, so we're going to produce that and then we make, need to make some more nickel silver as well. All right. So we got 10 left over. Um, I'm actually going to put it over here. Well, maybe down here. Yeah. This, this will kind of be a dust chest for now. All right. So. Uh, we're going to, because we got this all tore down, we're going to use the uh, combustion chamber up there. I'll let the world go a little bit. I just relogged. Uh, we're going to use the combustion chamber. All right. And uh, of course, we can, for the bronze and stuff, use this setup right here. And maybe I'll demonstrate that for the bronze. That'd be fine. Uh, see, I can put the items in uh, and they'll into the hopper. I could just drop them in. It'll place it and then smelt it. Now that's actually Quark that does that. I said it was vanilla automation. Vanilla automation might let you have dispensers place blocks, but Quark definitely will too. All right, so that gets us the bronze and then we get that. Now for, if you remember for uh, the, this setup, we had to have smelting temperature to be able to do nickel silver. All right, we did it back there with the smelting, but we can do it here too. All right, so basically we just need to use the bellows system. Uh, let me get the block. All right, so give it a little fuel, put that in and then engage the bellows and that should give us smelting. Yeah. All right, so you can use the combustion chamber for that. And of course now I just have a dispenser that's feeding into it, giving it one bit of fuel. So that's all it needs. Only problem is the trap door. All right, so that gets us the items that we sh need really to produce that, I believe, to produce all those spindles. So let's do that real quick. Uh, gearbox, this is a very important item. So let's first make all these. So we're gonna need a total of, let's see, five, yeah, five wooden spindles. All right, let's do those first. And then get the other ones done. Okay, we'll do these first. We need four of these, and you can see it's an alternative recipe with bronze. Just might as well use some of that too. Show you that there is an alternative. And 
now this guy, the alloy spindle, uh, the nickel silver I need to convert. Okay, now we should be able to do it. And we've done all this before, but I just, you know, show you the ingredients that are needed. Now we should be able to make the gearbox. It's just four iron and those spindles. All right, gearbox is an important item. So we're going to do two windmills and we're going to hook them together because we need to get UHT temperature. All right, uh, so let's see. I'll actually go ahead and place it. And we'll go into it with one windmill. And notice the windmills are now two down so that we can be even with this guy. All right. Uh, and then we'll just brass shaft hook up to this from out. So basically it has, oh, uh, I guess five inputs and one output. All right, so the red is the output. So we need to rotate that to face us like that. Uh, yeah, I guess it has five, uh, I guess all the other sides. All right, so we just need to get a brass shaft and hook that up. And again, keep in mind, you wanna keep a distance from it it doesn't really matter but you don't want this wet condition to affect this in here all right so if you remember we have a fire stand down below here that's lit uh and we have a heat exchanger right and the heat exchanger let's look at that real quick again uh, the use of it uh by energy input it raises the heat here on the red side and reduces the heat here on the blue side so if you give it six plus torque up to 32, then it'll give you heat a heat raise of tier one, one tier. You give it 32 torque, it'll give you uh, two tiers raising, all right? So that's why we're gonna use two windmills. Each one of these produces 16 torque and it'll go into the gearbox and combine that torque and send over there. Now there'll be a little bit of loss, but it, it doesn't seem to matter ultimately. All right, so basically we just need to put in our trap door so we can contain the water. Uh, you don't need as many in this small setup. Um, actually, yeah, just one right here. Let me uh, put it on a dirt block. Yeah, just one right there in between them would work. All right, and here and here. All right, so that'll contain all the water. So once we get this guy flowing, uh, then we want to put dispensers on the top of them so that we can turn them on and off. All right, so uh, let's get a dirt there, there, and go down one so we can get the angle on the dispenser. So it's facing downward like that. All right, uh, sleep real quick. In this mod, you end up sleeping a lot. Uh, really, you kind of want to if you want to go through the whole year of seasons, too. Um, but all right, that's good. Should work. I uh, get buttons. I only have one, but I've got stone. Make another button real quick. I uh, give a button to each one of these. I could probably chain one button together, you know, and put redstone in between them, but you really kind of want to control these separately because it gives you an option now, put water buckets in, to uh, either have one heat tier raise or two heat tier raises, and, and that matters, all right? So if I run this, it'll be just like our setup before. Uh, let's make sure everything's spinning correctly. Yeah, I use our climate checker and look at the, the heat here, all right? And so this guy is producing smelting temperature, all right? So just what it was doing before. And that will produce regular steel, all right? But if I raise this, if I run the second one, then it's getting 16 torque. And you can see along here, 32, 32 there, 3184, 3168, all right? And then this should be stage two active torque 31.2 UHT temperature. All right, so ultra high temperature on that. So we should get super hot from that too. All right, so that'll give us what we need to do the higher tiers of steel. All right, 
but we just want to do regular steel first so we're going to turn one of them off all right so remember to do steel let's look at steel block uh get the steel dust that's stainless steel Let's just get the, this steel and then the climate smelting and iron dust. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I've, I, on an iron dust block, the usage of it, all right, is uh, when you go to, to the metal heat treatment, you see it's a three stage process. I've already explained all this, but the important point is it's smelting or UHT. So we technically, we could just go ahead and run UHT through it. That would be fine if we ran both of these, but you can do it with smelting as well. All right, but we need to cool it then, and then we need to uh, give it an oven temperature. All right, so to do that, we're going to just make ourselves a little cooling chamber, and it needs to be two away so it's not affecting that block. All right, so we'll just make a little cooling chamber right here. Um, I need another bucket of water. Let me grab this bucket right now. I don't have a, I need infinite water down here. I haven't done that yet. Here. Right. And we'll put some water in there because again, it's going to need a wet condition. Right. And then I can just put that back. Uh, it doesn't really need to be tight or anything like that. Uh, according to the tool tips, you know, so but I'm gonna make it such that, see, let me put a trap door on top, like that, all right. Okay, and we're doing it at a curve because we're gonna actually curve, if I place the trap doors correctly, there we go. All right, so we're gonna run into here and this will give the wet condition, so let's get our conveyor belts, all right? We're gonna go over like this. Okay, and keep in mind the conveyor belts can run right over the top like that. Uh, it'll run into it, that'll be fine. And then we'll come out uh, here, and then we want to give it the oven temperature. All right, now to do that, and, and again, we need to be two blocks away so that it the wet condition and stuff doesn't influence that. Uh, this one won't, uh, we can look at the climate smelter and see that this block right here is wet see warm humid wet this one's not airflow's tight humidity's normal so i guess the flowing water will only travel one block right but we're going to use a magma block all right and a magma block is you know simpler way of doing it really uh, because it is a heat source of oven on its own all right and it's passive it just runs just like that's oven temperature all right so we, again, we don't really need to give it a tight condition. Again, you know, based on the recipe here. Uh, so you could choose what you want to do. I kind of like to spread them out, but it can be tight or it can be normal, can be tight, can be normal on these. So it doesn't really need to be surrounded, but I just think it looks better. I just think, you know, it gives you an idea that each one's a treatment station or what have you. Uh, and I like the trap doors and stuff in this pack. So I, I go ahead and surround it, all right? So you could do uh, here and uh, over here. Of course, I do get hot. I'm getting here, there, all right? And uh, then we can have a, an output chest if we'd like, or we could actually use the in-world uh, stuff from the stackable mod that'll work too that's kind of neat actually uh, but I will make an output chest uh, just because we'll be running some different stuff uh, yeah that'd be fine. I'll show you probably both of them because uh, you need at least one of the blocks of course if you're going to do stackable to create a stack I mean you could create a stack but basically uh, to get it started all right, and then we'll put one on top, trap door on top as well. And again, that's just for the looks. Pretty much, it does create a tight condition because when this uh, conveyor belt's in the trap door, 
then it it's tight all right so let's run a steel uh, we should have the proper temperature to do so and everything should work as a full stage process let's just run one to start all right so it'll go through and it, you saw it turn to hot steel all right then it turns around it's cooled steel and then it converts so that's it it works great so yeah it hits that stage that first stage converts to a hot block comes here hits the cool stage uh, again we can just demonstrate that right here this block is temperature normal and wet our right, humidity is wet that's what matters there temperature there getting real hot is oven uh, so this heat thing you know again i could probably just put it in one of these cooling coils here because see i mean i, I could easily get to the point of taking damage uh, so let's put down a cooling coil again and uh, you know you're working around these high temperatures now so the summer's not the ideal time to do this uh, but you know that's just what you got to do Mo mostly you will be because summer is when you're going to have enough resources and stuff by the time summer rolls around uh, to do that so it's a good idea i guess to put down a, one of these coils uh, that you can just cool yourself with uh, and you could probably i could probably put it around here and all that but it, it should cool me down now uh tan temp info i'm, I'm certain that it is but for some reason my temperature went up let's let's do tan temp info and be sure that yeah see i'm getting climatization so i guess it's just i'm still near that block so i probably want to be maybe a little bit further because i'm still within the range of that guy but it's keeping me stable enough okay uh that's pretty cool now like i said we can easily run some of the higher tier stuff as well so you know we could go through and run all these um but we're wanting to get to let's look at the recipe for the hammer mill all right the hammer mill uh takes tool steel spindles which are four tool steel so you need eight tool steel so one uh, block conversion would do it and then you need three stainless steel all right uh but yeah let's look at the recipe for the tool steel i have it here basically tool steel dust block so it's either magnetite or iron and it's mag manganese chromium and molybdenum molybdenum yeah, have you said that all right that's what that is and then this guy is chromium and nickel all right and iron all right so i've ran some stuff i don't know that i have everything i need uh, let's check all right, so I have, yeah, molybdenite. All right, we're good. We have chromite. I have five of those. We're good on that. Uh, use of this is to make the manganese. So we should have what we need for, for this. Uh, we need a total of one manganese. One. All right, we got that covered for that one. Now for this one, we need two chromium. Yeah, yeah, we should be covered, guys. So let's um, let me check to be sure that you know the higher crusher seal will give you two of those. So you don't want to run really run more than you need. All right. So this guy would give us the manganese, uh, two of them, the chromite. Let's run two of those, and one of these. And I think we may have what we need. Uh, let's go ahead and fire this guy up. All right, I added a hopper here coming out of this into there and turned off by a lever, and that way I could feed items from here if I wanted to. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't have to. But if I wanted to run those extra products through the stage, then I could. So just little things like that can be helpful sometimes. So go and run this stuff. That Oh, it does good, just give us one in this, in this crusher. So we probably need more than that let's double what we did so get two more chromium one more of each one and again i'm not sure that that's exactly what we need but that's pretty much all we got so hopefully it is uh, i can run more obviously but for right now 
All right, get these guys ran. And even at this level, it's pretty fast. Wow, that's getting it pulled. Okay, so let's check again to see that for tool steel, and yeah, we're definitely good on that. Uh, the iron dust, I actually converted. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I do have some magnetite. Let's go and grab that real quick, guys. Um, I can just run iron again. I didn't know that we'd have time to make these blocks. But if we can, then that's fine. Let's do it. Uh, we're kind of near time, but not too bad. So, yeah, if I have the chance to make them, then I might as well. Uh, here. Okay. And there's magnetite. So run it real quick and it'll give us the magnetite dust. Uh, this is equally as fast as that. So magnetite on that guy and magnetite on this guy. So chromium two, uh, three. Nickel we definitely have. And then one of each one of those. Yeah, we should be able to run these guys. I need six hours. Yeah, 16. So I have just enough. I'll grab the extra two. Cool. Okay, yeah, I should have just enough to make those. And it's pretty much that's all you need uh, is one of each block, one of those to make the crusher. All right. Now the crusher, we won't. I, I'll be able to put it down, but not really do a setup or anything with it. So, yeah, let's grab all that stuff out. Manganese, chromium. All right. And let's try to produce these. So let's do this uh, stainless tool steel block first. Using that. All right. And then this stainless steel. Uh, we're missing a nickel. I have that. Okay. Cool. So now we're into tier three metals, uh, and we can again run those at the UHT temperature. So let me put up all those extras. I may have enough even for not totally, but close. I, I could get at least one of those types again. I think. Um, all right. So here's the tool steel. There's the regular steel. Now, looking at those again, uh, they need UHT temperature or Inferno, all right? In the same conditions otherwise, uh, exactly the same, either wet or underwater, oven, exactly the same beside that. So again, using this setup, we can get that double power. That'll get us to UHT from a passive block. I mean, I, that's so cool that that fire stand underneath there is passive and it never goes out, All right? So uh, we should have 31, this should be UHT now. Yeah, it's at stage two, so let's run it. So you should see it over there, convert, yeah, to the cooled one, and then to the block, ice. All right, run that. Nice. Okay, guys, so there you go. We got stainless steel, tool steel, and steel done with this one setup. So we got another advancement from that for the higher tier blocks. And of course, each one of these will convert to ingots. And then from that, we can go ahead and make this hammer mill. Uh, the induction motor is some copper and all that. Uh, We'll definitely be able to make it, but I think we're going to go ahead and do that in the next episode, guys. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, but there's no reason because I need to gather the copper and all that. And we're, uh, well, I, I have bronze that won't work. Uh, yeah. So I have to get all that stuff together just to make that. I didn't know that we'd actually get this far, but guys, that's really cool. So we've moved to the next level. Uh, let's look at our advancements here. Uh, and see that 
Yeah, now we're into the tier three stuff. We got the weight of modern industry. So we need to make a windmill and steel shaft. I just, you know, got enough steel to run. Those just give you higher torque capabilities, um, which we, we might want to look at that real quick, just to show you that the brass shafts that we've been using have a torque capability of 32. So we've maxed them out with the brass. To move to the next level, that would give us 128. And, and that's all the levels there are. There's not tool steel. Well, there is stainless steel, actually. Uh, so there is another one that has 512. So 128, 512, 32 for each one of those. All right. And we'll build a series of windmills in here that give us high power. You know, we won't necessarily need it, I don't know. Because distributing torque power is not extremely easy because of the loss, but you can do it. I mean, it's just a bunch of shafts. But anyway, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This mod's great. I've having a lot of fun with it. Uh, the decorations, the food. I'll look more into some of the food stuff in between. Get us some different foods. And uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and pick up from there. Uh, we may be able to just run and get another food real quick because I'm right at the edge of an advancement. Uh, to the net to that top 10 hearts before we have to have 25 foods so guys let me do that actually real quick because uh the next tiers you've got to have 25 foods for each one so let's just use cooking for blockheads and grab us i mean even like a cooked salmon would do it just anything but let's get a food from the mod uh let i ate this let's get a nut and bean salad all right and it gives us Three shanks of hunger and a shank and a half of saturation. So let's see this guy. There we go. Gain two hearts. So now we've got a full other 10 hearts. And again, uh, you know, if you're any in any kind of combat or getting danger or whatever, then it's actually hard to keep those hearts filled. So that's kind of one of the reasons I did it is so that I could eat bigger foods to heal me more and stuff like that. Uh, so anyway, that's going to be it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Scott Omato house is coming along. By the way, look at the chandelier up there, guys. Uh, that's a chandelier from the mod chancel only chandelier. So that's a pretty cool little thing. Uh, looking nice in here. Uh, we're going to do a lot more. I'm not going to have the floor all wood and stuff. I'll, I'll do some transformations and all that. But a little bit at a time. You know how it goes. Anyway, Scott Omato, thanks so much for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.